Right then, this is Sheila. It's about half past 12 on a Saturday. I think it's the 20th. It could be the 21st. Anyway, I've had a very anxious morning. I spent last evening planning, getting everything ready for my bigger walk um, of January. I did a lovely walk in Sand Bay the other day, which was beautiful. And I plan to do another walk that I like doing during the non-season of the cow. Getting, going to Hutton and then going to down by the river axe to bleeding. But guess what? I went out, I was all prepared, but I said to myself, you don't have to go out at nine, Sheila. It's very frosty, wait, go out at 10. There was a mist creeping in. Anyway, it must have been a type of warning to stop me going really. But look what a lovely day it is. And I would have been out on this walk I really, really wanted to do. I haven't done it for probably a year. Anyway, I go out. I'm on time for the number 50 bus. Look, you never guess. I had, f I was almost at the bus stop. Less than a minute away. And what would pass in front of me four minutes early? That's a very, four minutes is a long time to be early. Now we, to be late is better than to be early. So I seen my bus go by and I knew there wouldn't be another one for an hour. But quick thinking, I thought that's okay. You've just got time to get down and get the 20. Anyway, I went, went down and of course they hadn't changed the timetable and it's too hourly now. So I waited there for, well, I don't know, 20 minutes. 20 didn't come. And it wasn't going to come to 11 o'clock because it was too hourly and they hadn't changed the timetable. So by now I'm quite, quite disturbed. I thought, right, go home for a minute because you're getting cold. Just go home and then try and get the next number 50. So I go and have, I just go back, cool down. I had a bit of a rant because I was fed up. Because I knew now there was another hour where I wouldn't be going on my walk. And I'd already delayed it by an hour from 9 to 10 to leave. Now it was going to be 11. So I go down 10 minutes early and thinking to myself, someone's probably complained and that bus driver is going to be 10 minutes late. So I wait. Five minutes. 10 minutes. 20 minutes. 25 minutes. I'm still waiting. It's freezing. There's freezing fog. In the end, I thought it ain't coming. Now I saw the bus that was four minutes early coming back on its reverse journey and I sort of gestured to the driver. What about like that? I just said to him as if to say, you were early and where's the, where's the one now? He sort of looked at me, he knew, but he was going the other way. So by now I was really disturbed. I was cold. I thought, I don't want to go anywhere else. I've got my walk planned. I got up especially early to go up the shop by eight o'clock to get the groceries for the weekend. So I would be, be able to relax, take my time and get that 10 o'clock bus. And I then thought, oh, well, you could get the nine. But no, I said, no, get the 10. There was plenty of time to get to that bus stop. It was so absolutely gutting seeing that bus go by. By now I'm just thinking, I really do need to get a car because I'm getting fed up with this, having to hitch out of dangerous places because the buses don't turn up. No, no reliability. The whole bloody public transport network's collapsing. You never know when they're going to strike. Not always. And even if they don't, if they let you know they're going to strike, they'll still go slows and trains that don't turn up. So I went back, I was still fuming. I thought, go back, Sheila. 
go and have a hot co coffee or something and then just just go up the wood just go and have a walk Zara calmed me down went and saw Zara had to deliver a parcel so I didn't want to unload on her really but she knew I was planning this walk anyway so I said right to myself there's no buses at all on a Sunday so what you'll have to do Sheila is um, if it's nice on Monday go and do that walk Monday that you will be able to do it you just have to sacrifice something else because the thing is I do these walks to keep my stress and anxiety under control So what I've decided to do, yeah, because I didn't go out every day on a long hike. If it seems all right Monday, I'm coming. <sighs> this was a really good day to have done my walk, by the way. I would have been walking down the hill, beautiful views over to Brent Knoll and the River Axe. That's what I would have been doing now. <sighs> but something said, don't do it, Sheila. It was very cold earlier. So anyway, when I went back last time, I thought, right, okay, just have a hot drink out the flask. Have a hot drink out your flask. Don't lighten the load. Take a load of stuff out that you don't need when you're going on a short walk. So I always pack more stuff when I'm going further afield. You don't need so much water. I thought I won't need the leggings. Um, so I loaded the bag quite a lot. I just brought all the camera equipment. I'm recording this because it is, it is important. It just shows how valuable my walks are, you see? And how they keep me calm. I do get anxious about buses and trains though. It's just, really, it's just said, time for a car. Even if I'm gonna be skint as hell. If we can hardly feed ourselves and we've got to put petrol in a vehicle. But I mainly want mine for the summer. So I had thought about, I, I am still thinking of doing, I was hoping they did courses in the winter with Cambridge University because there's a nice course I want to do on burials and graveyards and stuff. It's, it cost um, £300 <coughs> and you get a certificate of, a t of participation from Cambridge University and I really would love to do that. Even be better if I could do a course with Clare College. I haven't looked at their site yet. But the thing is with the course at the moment, it's right in the middle of the summer. It's May, June and July. I thought, no, there's some times when I should be off doing things. It's the wrong time of year for me. I'd be stuck inside doing coursework. So I'm hoping they repeat it in the winter. They ought to, really. It's something like a 12-week course. Right, here we come. We're doing a walk I did the other day, but we're doing it in reverse. Right, over and out for a minute then. Video two. Oh, there's people everywhere. People everywhere. Just can't get away from them. Right then, so what I'm just waiting for those people to move. That's what I'm saying weekends, there's so many people about. There's a big, big, big tree. I'm doing a walk I did the other day in reverse, just to remind you. 
Now the first video I did was really talking all about the anxiety caused by buses not coming too early so I've missed it and buses coming never coming um, and absolutely ruining my plan for the day which was started very early last yesterday getting everything organized I always do if I know I'm going on a longer walk getting up early so I can go and do a little bit of grocery shopping and get the paper get the dinners in so I'm back in time to have some breakfast get warm and then go out and get the bus now most of the time it, it, it works but I don't want to go on about it now because that's all on the first video <laughs> but basically I'm up in the wood now on the 20th first off January I will be 71 in six days time by the way I should be 21 I mean 71 <gasps> yeah I'll be 71 I can't believe it I said 21 I remember being 21 can you remember being 11 yeah I can remember being 11 and uh, I can remember being 21, 31, 41, 51, 61, 71 you tend to remember the, the decades though don't you 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 I had a party on my 50th, a big party in the pub, which is now gone, the pub, Barrow Inn. Had a folk band, loads of food, and uh, a party went on at my house afterwards. People were queuing to get in. When I was 60, it was more sedate, and we just went up the local village social club. And I had a lovely present from everybody. A lovely new computer. Flowers, chocolates, everything. Wine. That was a lovely... That was a... Since that time things have changed quite a lot in, in regards to family. I never see my family anymore really. Not now. Somehow we've drifted way apart. I mean, they might not have, but me and Zara, I haven't got any transport. I always used to make the effort when I had wheels. It was always me that did the visiting. Like I said, buses and trains aren't reliable, not especially now. So basically, I spent, before Zara came back to Western, I was spent four years alone. No one, hardly anyone visited me. I think Georgia did two or three times. Um, and then, um, what happened after that? Yeah, we just drifted apart, really. My 70th, <laughs> just a while not have had a birthday. Didn't get no flowers, no chocolates, not even a card. I think there was sort of a blip on the Facebook. Um, it was completely different. I couldn't believe it because it was my plat. It was my um, like the Queen when her jubilee of seventy years. It was my seventy years, and uh, it was, I felt quite sad. So did Zara. She said she couldn't believe it either that no one had even suggested doing anything like going for a meal or go to the pictures like we used to in the past on my birthday. No, there was total silence. Total silence. And yet three days later, they were all out with their dad. And it wasn't her, his 70th or anything. And they put it all over Facebook. And I don't forget things like that. And I don't normally retaliate, but I just thought to myself, you know, I used to make a lot of effort always Christmas and birthdays with the kids 
but I don't hear nothing from them. The grandkids rarely contact me. I mean, Amber did. I think she made a conscientious effort, and I was quite proud of her for that. So, she's the only one, really, that's done that. And she hadn't done it much, because she's only just thought about doing it. So that was nice. She wished me Happy New Year. I loved that. And, I, and I'm that old school, really, where you like cards. Anyway, it did affect me, and this year I didn't send anybody a Christmas card. Uh, just one or two people, like, I think I sent my friend Eileen a card, because she's not on the internet. And I sent someone else a card. That was it. And birthdays, I'm not doing cards either. So I am sort of retaliating a bit. This is a reflective journal and visual diary, everyone. Just got to turn off, take a picture of the mist there.